to uh, quote uh, the Apostle Paul. He said in the book of Acts, I think myself happy. Uh, I just love, love, love that statement. I think myself happy because today's message will hopefully bring an end to premeditation, will bring an end to discontent, dissatisfaction, worry, anxiety, Thank you, Lord. doubt, fear. Thank you, Lord. That's a tall order. <laughs> but I realize that part of the reason we have these things uh, is really twofold. We know we're all born with uh, spirits of the world in us, pride and lust. And uh, pride, of course, wants us to focus on ourselves. And lust, of course, wants us to focus on those things that we desire for ourselves. Those two combined work against faith. Mm -hmm. And we know faith has two parts. Uh, faith is based on knowing God and obeying God. Mm -hmm. So, the reason we have premeditation, discontent, dissatisfaction, and all these things is lack of knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. And of course, impatience. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the lust part. So, uh, and part of that is, is really more so the lack of, the impatience we got to work on. But if we understand God better, then we'll know, don't look for God in a particular season. That, 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 you see, there's seasons, and we're going to talk about that. And the problem is we don't understand the seasons of God. Mm -hmm. So, so if God is coming in the fall, and it's spring, and you're looking for Him, well, you can look all you want. He's not coming till the fall. Mm -hmm. But if I know He's coming till the fall, then I'll wait till the fall. Mm -hmm. See, and I know we can do that because Sister Fails, for instance, it's a garden. Mm -hmm. If she puts seeds in the ground today, guess what Sister Fails is not looking for tomorrow? She's not looking for plants tomorrow. Are you with me? She understands no, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. The seed has to go in, has to germinate, i got to put some water on it, some fertilizer, mm -hmm. and, and then I'll have a plant. Amen. See? So I, I think today I'm going to talk about that aspect of God. Mm -hmm. Who is God and when does he show up? Amen. See, a lot of times we talk about us and what we have to do, and we, we clearly got to do that. But I want to introduce God to you. And specifically, I want to introduce the God of the impossible. Amen. I want to introduce the God of the impossible. And we're going to talk about three or so, three or so aspects of God. And when we put those three things together, it will give you a sense of when God is about to act, specifically in your situation. Amen. Okay? Amen. So you'll know, well, don't expect him now. It's spring. <laughs> don't, don't look for him now. See? He's coming in the fall. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right? See? By, by the end of this, uh, this, of this, you should be able to at least know this is not God's season. So I'm not going to look for it. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to Luke 12. Go to Luke 12. And in some sense, Mark has touched on this when he dealt with the power of being still. And we actually can go back and relook at one of those uh, Exodus um, 14. And I want to point out really just like one verse that I want to point out uh, that he didn't cover, but it, it weighs in on when does God act? When does God act? And, that, and that, that's going to be ultimately what we want to find out. So if I understand when God acts, I'm not looking for him before that. In Luke 12, verse... Um, 54 through 56, Jesus is speaking and he said, um, he's speaking to the crowd, he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway you say, they come with a shower. And so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat. And it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time. As Christians, we should know the Father so intimately, we aren't expecting him when he's not going to show up. Mm. We expect him when he is going to show up. Mm -hmm. Now, you may be sitting there saying, well, but, I, but I thought, no, well, yeah, there, there, there's aspects of God, we, will, we don't know when he's going to act. But the aspects of him that I'm going to introduce today, we do know when he's going to act. So for those situations, 
Wait till he's coming. Wait till he's coming. Don't be impatient now. You can be as impatient as you want. You can fret as much as you want. If it's not the season for him to show up, he's not showing up. Mm -hmm. So it's really a waste of time to spend that energy if it's the wrong season. Mm -hmm. Just like it would be a waste of time for Sister Fails to go out the very next day looking for the fruit. Mm -hmm. It's just not the season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. um, go to Ephesians. So we're talking about the things that cause, that really open the door to Christians ultimately moving away from God. Premeditation, worrying about tomorrow, we're commanded not to uh, uh, focus on tomorrow. Discontent, dissatisfaction, worry, anxiety, doubt, fear. All these things take us away from the Lord. And for the most part, all these things occur because we really don't understand God. In Ephesians 4, verse 17 and 18, this is an addition to what we just read in Luke 12, it says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as are the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Mm -hmm. See, if I walk in the vanity of my mind, then I do have premeditation, I do have discontent, I do have this 